Sin Advocate of Nigeria and a former legal advisor of the APC, Mr. Mwiz Banere. He joins us right now from uh, Ikeja, Lagos. Thank you so much, Mr. Banere, for uh, joining us tonight. Let's begin by understanding what uh, your group means by that the federal government has taken a wrong approach. Uh, thank you very much. Um, our position is simple that uh, most of the things that are going on after the protests are not those that we can describe as being bona fide. When I mean bona fide, that is, is being done in good faith, particularly with the intervention of so many people to get the uh, inside protesters back to their base. Uh, our expectation is that the government will continue to engage them in a very meaningful manner rather than what is going on all around them. But, uh, for example, as you rightly said, uh, in one of the situations, we find a situation where somebody's passport was abandoned, but eventually that was released and explanation and apology given. But we see have a lot of other instances of harassment of some of these people, and we believe that that shouldn't be the approach at all. Rather than doing that, we believe more in engagement of these people. Because they, whether we like it or not, they are not even leaders of tomorrow again. They are leaders of today. They need to be engaged in a very, very conducive atmosphere. We are not to terrorize them. We must not harass them. And we must not force them to leave their country. So uh, you said it's a wrong approach. Uh, you said that the government uh, is not trusted by the people, uh, which, according to your uh, statement, uh, led to the elongation of the protest. Uh, start by also clarifying for us the position of a law in the stand of the CBN, for example, where in uh, uh, the case that was uh, the court order that was gained to um, uh, freeze the account of 19 persons and one organization. You are a senior advocate. Give us an insight into that. Well, there is a provision in the Central Bank, Bank and Other Financial Institutions Act, uh, both it, uh, uh, to the particular, I think, specifically Section 68B or thereabout, that confers on the Central Bank the right to seek expert order where they, 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 they have the impression that a particular account is being used in a criminal manner. But the truth of the matter is that in this instance, we all know what has transpired. Uh, but unfortunately, the order itself, in my very strong view, is flawed. When I read the order, I saw that the order granted by the judge is to the effect that to enable the Central Bank of Nigeria to carry out inquiry and investigation. How will you free somebody's account after, and then go back to investigation and inquiry? I'm sure that is a case of putting the car before the law. But beyond that itself, the law does not even say that. What the law says is that even where you do so, you must escalate the matter to the Nigerian police or any of the other security agency, not for the country back to start investigation and inquiry. So to that extent, I believe that that order is flawed. So if you are criticizing the position of the federal government, rightly, what do you think the federal government should have done instead? Well, in the first system, my expectation is that the federal government, uh, as promised or pledged by the president in his speech, uh, should have just gone ahead, engage them in respect of the five demands of the youth. And beyond that also, try to build confidence in this youth. The truth of the matter is that we are deceiving ourselves is that Nigerians generally and largely tend not to trust the government in anything. In fact, to a large extent, when government says no, most Nigerians interpret it to mean yes. And in a situation like this, where the, the youth themselves have come out to say, look, we do not trust you. Anything you say, you are not going to live up to the expectation. The least that we can do post the protest should have been that we engage them to put this trust that we haven't promised that we will deliver this. We are going ahead to do it. Uh, the regrettable thing is that, and from my experience with the government, particularly at the federal level, I'm not too sure. I must confess that the president is aware of it because if you recall in his speech, he did say that as far as he's concerned, he recognized the right of the people of Nigeria to protest. But the truth is that we have so many overseas public officials who will go out of their way in order to want in the, in the process of attempting to impress uh, the president to do things that are not only retrogressive, they are even barbaric. How will you free somebody's account for 90, 180 days? 
without any investigation. In the first instance, Central Bank is not an invest it cannot be investigating crime. We know by the law that by, by the constitution of this country, agencies that can investigate crime. And if, we, if you must do that, the reality of the matter is that that must have been done before you approach the court. I would rather even prefer a situation where such power must be, as a matter of urgency, deleted, because it's going to hurt all of us. It's a bad precedent. The reality is that the senators, I even understand and I know that the central bank is really pushing for the expansion of that provision before the Senate if they do amendment. I did that, in my very strong view, must be opposed and rejected. And Nigerians generally must rise up, must speak up against this provision. It can be abused and it's been abused in my very strong view. You cannot just wake up one money and start freezing people's account because you suspect. You haven't even done your inquiry. You haven't done your investigation according to the order. That, in my view, is very, very wrong. And it must be condemned by all. Stay with us, Mr. Banere, because there are other angles to it. We understand that the Apex Bank is alleging that the trans transaction in those frozen accounts that are cause economic and security harm. We we'll look in, uh, deeper into that and perhaps the way forward from all of this. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's, uh, let's get back to the conversation with Ms. Uh, Moise Banner, senior advocate of Nigeria, a former legal advisor of the APC, one of uh, the concerned professionals, some Nigerians, who have come out today to criticize the move of the government in uh, the approach to uh, the NSAS protesters and some of the developments that we've seen. Um, Mr. Uh, Banner, uh, you, you sound disappointed tonight about some of the decisions of the federal government. But you are uh, a member of the ruling APC. You served as uh, the legal advisor of the party. What do you perceive uh, has become the problem uh, in a party that uh, you uh, partook in its forming and you also served as a legal advisor? Something dramatically changed or what is wrong? Well, let me start uh, by correcting the impression uh, that uh, I am a member of the ruling party. I was a member of the ruling party. So it's not a past tense. And I'm sure you should be aware of that almost two years now. But the truth of the matter is that what has changed in the system, in my very frank way, is lack of coordination. Because if you discover that an agency will do something unknown to the other arm of the government, or one arm will do something, the other arm is not aware of it. So there is no proper coordination. And I think that's the major challenge here. There's no proper coordination. You saw the situation with the passport also. Somebody's passport was wrongly impounded. Eventually, there was intervention from another quarter to say it should be released. Now, in this situation, too, I'm quite optimistic that certainly it cannot be a product of the presidency. It must be as a result of somebody somewhere who feels that he has some measure of power to exercise over the people. And he must show that I'm a good boy. That's all. So, um, Mr. Panure, when the Apex Bank alleged that the transactions in some of the frozen accounts uh, could be related to funding of uh, 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 terror or uh, can cause uh, economic and security harm, what's your reaction to that stance? Well, maybe they are saying that in their private offices. Uh, what is contained in the other is that the other is just enabling them to do inquiry on investigation, which presupposes that nothing has been done in the first system, but just rushing to court to obtain the expert order. The other is clear. And secondly, again, is that there are enough provision in all the security agencies' laws capable of dealing or addressing the situation. I do not think, I do not believe that it should be the business or the concern of the central bank to be dealing in such issues. We have security uh, outfits in the country which can deal with all those issues relating to security, and they also have the enabling power to freeze any account if they so suspect. But the reality is that what we now find out is a situation where the central bank will take it upon itself to go and secure an order to start freezing people's uh, account. In my very strong view, again, I believe it's an unconstitutional provision, and I do expect that that provision should be challenged. And everybody should speak out, particularly members of the National Assembly. They might enjoy be enjoying it today. I can assure them 
it's a dangerous precedent that tomorrow is coming to haunt some of them, and you will now see them jumping up. The reality is that not in a democratic society you should you have that kind of provision in the Banking and Financial uh, Institutions Act. So for me, I believe we have enough provision domicile in the legislation establishing the various security that could have dealt with that situation. But even right now, as I said to you, there is nothing that has been indicated contrary to the provision section of CCAB of the Senate, that particular act that is the police or any of the other security agencies that is going to do the investigation. What is in the order is that to enable Central Bank to now go and conduct a query investigation. Then how did you come to court to say this person, this person that can't be suspicious? Whereas we all even know who these people are. And we know there are people that participated in the last protest, and there are people who actually are, 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 are more or less being hooded in the environment now. So for me, I, I don't think that is, the, is, is good enough a reason. It's not right. good enough a reason so, at all so, on the part of the central bank. The central bank should focus on the economy and other financial matters. Leave the job of security to those who are specialists in those areas. I don't understand from my own law when President Bank becomes an, a criminal investigation party. Quickly, uh, Mr. Banure, uh, try to help because in the statement released by your group today, the issue of victimization, harassment came up more fre uh, very frequently. And let me read a portion of that statement. It reads that no amount of intimidation or harassment will work as it will only exacerbate tensions in an otherwise fr fragile polity. What do you mean by that? Well, it's simple. There is nowhere, to, uh, to the best of my knowledge, where that works. Peaceful engagement is always the solution to it. Dialogue is always the solution. If you make peaceful engagement in a, uh, uh, impossible, then you are certainly inviting violence. That's the meaning. Nowhere has that worked. At the end of the day, it will be dialogue. So why don't you just start with dialogue? Dialogue with them, talk to them. Even let's assume the worst scenario that they've been wrong. Government needs to demonstrate some measure of maturity in accommodating them. We are training them to be our leaders. Whether we like it or not, they will eventually displace us. What example, what precedent are we setting? All right, quickly, um, I'd like to get your uh, reaction. You, you said you, you quit active politics. So are you saying that you quit the, uh, the, uh, the APC or... You've uh, left politics, and what are you uh, up to? Well, for APC, I'm done. For politics, uh, I would say that uh, for now, I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed to see what we have. For example, the kind of initiative that I just the first policies initiative probably will encourage some of us to go back into it. Because truly, we cannot leave it to these charlatans. It's a bit dangerous. So I might have a reconsideration, maybe eventually or in the nearest future, but certainly not now that I'm addressing you. So you are majorly now focusing on your law practice? Oh, certainly. All right. So perhaps on a final note, and briefly too, uh, what perhaps uh, is your message tonight to... Uh, the young Nigerians, or your advice to them, uh, some of them who are experiencing what you have described in your statement today? Well, sorry, I didn't get the second leg of your No, no, I'm, I, I said on the, the, on the final note, on the final become. note, Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me, let me shoot again. I said on a final note, and briefly too, what yes. your message and your advice to the young Nigerians, some of whom are experiencing, some of those who came out to the street and were agitating on social media? Well, my advice to them for now is to become, engage themselves to a productive team, particularly get involved in politics. They need to get the politics. All of them need to go and get their PVC. Encourage others to get their PVC. Now, in my very strong view, is their time. 
And of course, initiatives such as that that has just been launched must be encouraged all over the old place. So that at the end of the day, they themselves, if there is any lacuna in their leadership capacity, we can improve it. As I always tell people, if we say they lack the capacity to lead us, then we are indirectly inducting ourselves. That means we are failed as leaders to have brought them up properly. So for me, I will encourage them to continue to engage the system in a very, very peaceful manner. All right. Mr. Moise Banner, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, thank you so much for talking to us tonight on China's television. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.